Good day learners. Welcome to technical mathematics lesson. My name is Lumga Sloanyana. This lesson is brought to you by Saibono Discovery Center in, in collaboration with Gauteng Department of Education. Our topic for today, we are going to be looking at trigonometry. The objectives that I expect you to know at the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to draw the three graphs and determine the effect of P on them. I expect you to be able to develop sine and cosine curves. I expect you to be able to solve trig equations and of which you'll be checking as to where each and every equation, uh, uh, when plotting tho uh, tr uh, solving those equations, you are checking where the ratio is positive or negative. What you already know is that you are able to plot the sine graph, the cos graph, and the domain where x is between 360 and 0, or 0 to 360. And you are already aware of the fact or effect of A that determine the shape and amplitude of the graph. And you are already aware of the effect of Q which shift the graph vertically upward or downward. And you already know some definitions which are included in, the, in this topic of trig graphs or trig functions. You already know the amplitude, that when I'm talking about the amplitude, I refer to the height from the center of the line of the graph to the maximum or the minimum value. And when I'm talking about the asymptote of the graph, it's where the graph doesn't touch or doesn't cross over. And we refer to that one as the asymptote. You already know that. You already know the period. When I'm talking about the period of the graph, the distance it takes a complete one full cycle for the graph to complete. When I am plotting, for example, I'm plotting a sine graph, you know the parent graph of sine for it to have a full shape, which uh, shape are you expecting? That is the period of the graph, from where to where, or how long the graph it can be. You already know the domain, when I'm talking about the domain, or inputs of the graph. Those are the values which are referred to as the x values, and the outputs are the ones which we refer to as the range, which is the y values. Already you know this. Now, today we are going to be looking or uh, drawing the trig graphs and determining the effect of P. How is P affecting our graph? When drawing the trig graph with the change in the parameter P, we must know you need to know that the minute you see the P changing, it tells you how is your graph changing. Your graph will be changing horizontally. It's changing to the left or to the right, where you will hear me talking about the positive shift or the negative shift of the graph. When you are having a, posi a positive shift, it means you are moving to the left. That is a positive shift of the graph. And when you are having a negative shift, you are moving to the right. You will even see the equation where your P is saying uh, uh, whatever value or theta plus uh, 45, for example, you must know that th that is a negative shift of the graph. It's moving to the left. When I say uh, theta plus, um, um, I mean minus 30, you, uh, you must know that that is a positive shift. Your graph is moving to the right. Okay, let us look at the examples that I have made for you. You can see I have drawn the 
a parent graph of sine y equal to sine theta and y equal to sine theta minus 30 degrees. And from the parent graph of y equal to sine theta, you can see it's the gray one, it's this one. I'm having w my first one as this one. That is my first graph. And when I'm shifting my parent graph from that movement, from where it is, you can see it's going like this. That is the parent graph. The minute I shift it, uh, remember I said when I say minus, theta minus, it's a positive shift. You will see the graph moving there. There is a positive shift. This is a graph of y equal to sine theta minus 30. It has moved. It has shifted to uh, 30 units to the right. And you can see that is a positive shift because I say minus. And when I say, uh, if I say plus 30, y equal to sine theta plus 30. You must know your graph is going to shift 30 units to the left. And the things to look at before you plot your graph, if you are given a graph like that, you must firstly examine the graph. Check which shift is happening on the graph. And after doing that, you must be able to draw your table where you will be using your calculator to find your values of the, the graph where you are going to be plotting from one point to the next. And that is what is going to happen. So I'm having the, the first one. Remember I said this is a parent graph. This is a parent graph of sine y equal to sine theta. And the minute I shift it, can you see the shift? It's moving that way. So that is a shift of sine theta minus 30. Don't be confused seeing the minus and you think that your graph is shifting to the left. Is not shifting to the left, but is shifting to the right. Okay, look at this one. I am having a graph of cos. A parent graph of cos is this one. That is a gray color where I am having a parent cos graph. And you can see that when I say w y equal to cos theta plus 30, the graph is shifting to the left, okay? So I am having that movement, moving to the left. And you can see that is a, when I'm having positive or plus on the graph. The graph is shifting to the left. And uh, when I'm having negative, the sign, I mean the graph is moving to the right. Okay, you can even look at the graph of 10. I am having a graph of 10 there where I have given you y equal to 10 theta and have shifted 10 theta 30 units. Which side? To the left. Because I say y equal to 10 theta plus 30. So I am moving or shifting that graph to the left. You must also know, before you answer, you examine the graph. How is it shifting? And you notice that y1 equal to 10 theta, we have p equal to 0 there. There is no shift, no phase shift on the graph on that one. And 
the minute I say y equal to 10 theta plus 30, now your p is equal to 30. And that p is greater than 0. And there, the graph you will see it's shifting to the left. When you are having p greater than 0, your graph is shifting to the left. When your p is less than 0, your graph is shifting to the right. Less than 0, shifting to the right. Greater than 0, shifting to the left. Don't confuse that. And you can see that your 10 graph, you know the 10 graph from grade 10 all the way up to grade 11. When I am talking about undefined, when your value is undefined, when pressing your calculator you say 10 of negative 90 and your, your calculator will give you undefined, it tells you that you are having an asymptote there. The graph will never pass through, will never cross that line. And you w it's going to determine uh, how is your graph moving. You are moving to which direction, but not crossing that part. You can see that I am having the undefined at negative 90 and at 90, which means my period, my full cycle, my full shape of the graph will be shown when between negative 90 and 90. So I will be having a full period of my graph. And if you can look between 90 all the way up to negative, uh, from negative 90 up to 90, that is an interval of 180. So the 10 graph is covering or is giving you a full period at 180, unlike the cos and the sine where you are having a full period at um, 360. Whether you are shifting the graph so many units, but you are going to have a full period at 180, if it's 10, not unless you are stretching the graph where you are going to be looking at the parameter A now. Your graph is shrinking or stretched in that way. And then you will see that your graph is uh, completing the cycle or the, the period within. Or you, between one zero and one eight, you end up having uh, two or more graphs, depending on how you are stretching your graph, okay? Look at the, the sketch now. The, how does that effect of P affect? Uh, when I say from the parent graph, y, y equal to 10 theta, you see the graph going this way. You see your graph going this way. That is a parent graph of 10 between negative 90 and 90, which gives you 180. And when I am saying um, I am shifting the graph, y equal to 10 theta plus 30, I am shifting it 30 units to the left. So the graph is moving this way. You can see the graph moving that way, is moving this way to the left. Okay, but still it maintains the period. It's still 180. Let's look at the activity now. We have the activity on the same set of axes, sketch the following. y equal to sine x plus 45. Remember I said to you, you must firstly know your parent graph in order for you to know whether the graph has been shifted or not. So you can see I am talking about y equal to sine x plus 45. And for B, it's y equal to sine x plus 60. Your graph will be 
the first one at A will be shifting 45 units to the left and the second one will be shifting uh, 60 units or 60 degrees to the left and now after plotting that you use the sketches above and find the amplitude of the graph remember i said your amplitude is the height of the graph where which is determined by the point from the origin of the graph upwards to the maximum of the graph or from the origin of the graph downwards to the minimum of the graph that tells you the amplitude of the graph and you can see that that will be on the vertical movement of the graph as your graph is moving up it gives you the amplitude or moving down it gives you the amplitude and you must also find the period of that graph where am, am i going to have a full cycle of the graph or a full shape of the graph both x plus 40 and x plus 60 and you must also tell me the domain as well as the range remember i said the domain is the a, all the x values that you're having for the graph and y is all the range is all the y values of the graph and for number two you will be plotting on the same set of axes y equal to cos x minus 30 where it's shifting to the left now i mean is shifting to the right because i am having a positive shift x minus 30 and i have a cos x plus 60 i am having a negative sh a negative shift to the left 60 units okay uh, you will also be required to plot the 10 graph with a shift of 45 from the parent and a shift of uh, 60 i say 45 to the left and 60 to the right okay and after that you must give me the period the amplitude the range and the domain let's see it may look difficult but actually it's not when you are plotting firstly i said to you you must firstly draw your table and find your values of the graph i am going to use the same table and i will have the values on that same table for my angle theta or x where i have x where the question says x it's the same as theta x or theta my first one is y equal to sine um, x plus 45 x plus 45 that is my first graph and my second one is y equal to sine x plus 60 both of them are shifting to the left you can see all right this is my table i will have an interval of 45 throughout i'll be having an interval of 45 so that i can be able to see how are my coordinates going to look like i i will start from zero because in grade 11 we are still focusing on zero to 360 it, it can stretch beyond that but we are looking at zero degrees up to 360 zero 45 degrees 90 135 um 180 225 um 270 i have 315 because I said my interval is 45 degrees 
and I go to 360. So what I do here, I will use my calculator to find my values when my x is 0 and I add 45. So it's a sine graph of my x as 0 plus 45. It gives me root 2 over 2 which is 0 0.71, 0 0.71. When I say 45, my x is 45, it gives me 1. When it is 90, it gives me, uh, when I have 90, I have, 0 0.71 again. When I say 135, my x is 135. It gives me 0. When my x is 180, 180, it gives me negative 0 0.71 negative 0 0.71 you can see it's dropping now when it is 225 225 it gives me negative 1 can you see it has dropped to negative 1 when it is 270 270 it go back to negative 0 0.71 again it's going up and I'm at 315 when it is 315 it gives me 0 can you see it's going up again and when I'm at 360 my value is going to be 0 0.71, going to where it has started. That is y equal to sine x plus 41. Let's see what will be the coordinates when I say y equal to sine x plus 60. When my x is 360, Now I'm adding 60 this one on this one. Uh, I start with 0 plus 60. It gives me 0 0.81. I have 0 0.81. And when I go to 45, my, when my x is 45 now, it gives me 0 0.965, which I will round up to 1. And when my x is 90, I have 90 plus 60. It gives me half, uh, 0 0.5. When my x is 135, when I have 135 as x added 60 on it, it gives me negative 0 0.3, negative 0 0.3. I say negative 0 0.3, same as that 0 0.8. When I'm plotting, I don't need the second digit there. I must round. Uh, to one decimal place so that I can be able to see how my graph is going to be plotted. Now, I have uh, negative 0, 0.3 when it's 135. When it's 180, what is it going to give me? When it's 180, I add 60, it gives me negative 0, 0.9. 
okay? When I am at 2 to 5, when I'm at 2 to 5, the graph or the coordinates will be negative 1. I round up. When I'm at um, 270, 270, my graph will be at negative half or negative 0, 0,5. When I'm at 315, what will be my graph or my coordinates? 315, it gives me 0, 0,3. It's going up. When I'm at 360, 360, it gives me 0, 0,9. 0, 0,9. So, now I am ready to go and plot. I can be able to plot. Remember, I've got my values. I said uh, my graph is, I will be sketching both graphs on the same set of axes. And I have an interval of 45. I will add there. I have 45, I have 135 in between there, I have um, one, after 180 I have 225, 225, which goes to 270 after that, interval of 45, and I have 315 there degrees. And now remember, I have started with the y equal to sine x plus 45. And I said my value for 0 is equal to 0, 0,71. 0, 0,71. And 0, 0,71 is a positive 1. So I, I know that this is my origin of the graph. From my origin, I check between 1 and 0. 0, 0,7 is just above half. Half is over there. So 0, 0,7 will be there. So the point is going to be there. And I said when I'm at 45, for sine x plus 45, the value is going to be 1. So I have the point over there. And when I'm at 90, the value for 90 is 0, 0,71. Can you see it's dropping at 90, going back to 0, 0,71. I have 0, 0,71 over there. It's there. And when I say 135, my point is at zero. Remember I said it's going down. You can see it's going down. When I'm at 180, my value is negative 0, 0,71, which is just above negative half. Just above negative half. The point is over there. And at 2 to 5, my value is negative 1 over there. And at 270, it's going back again, negative uh, 0, 0,71. It's going back up. Remember, the shape of sine graph is not changing. And when I'm at 3, 1, 5, I'm at 0. The graph is at zero. And when I'm at 360, the graph is back to 0, 0,71. It's over there. So my graph is going like this. It's 
it's moving from where it started it has started going this way giving me a sign curve my graph is moving that way i have a sign graph going that way so that is my y equal to sign x plus 45 when i say y equal to sign x uh, plus 60 i am shifting 15 units from the from what i have um, uh, drawn already the one of y equal to sine 45 is shifting how many units 15 units because it's down from 60 by from six uh, from 45 to 60 is going down by 15 units which way to the left all right so i have my first point at 0 comma 9 just above that first one 0 comma 9 let me use a different color so that you can be able to see i have this one remember i said it's y equal to sine x plus 45 that is the black one now the red one that i'm going to plot is y equal to x plus 60. so i have my first point there 0 comma 9 just close to one a positive one and the next point at 45 it is equal to one it's over there and the next point is at half it's dropping at one at at half it's going down at 90 sorry it's going down to half i have a half at 90 just below the point because i said it's shifting if you can see my red over there and at 135 my graph will be at as negative 0 comma 3 0 comma 3 is below half it's over there so the point is over there and at um at 180 my value is negative 0 comma 9 going further down negative 0 comma 9 i'm having a point over there and at 2 to 5 my point is at 1 over there at um 270 my point is going back again at n at negative half negative half and at um, 315 it's back to 0 comma 3 up 0 comma 3 below half over there and 360 is back to 0 comma 9 where i have started 0 comma 9 it's not yet at one but close to one so my graph is going like this there's a slight shift between 45 and 60. the graph is shifting just a little bit as you can see there as you can see it's shifting 15 units to the left the red one is the one of y equal to sine x plus 60. you can see how the shift is affecting the graph it's shifting to the left when i say plus okay what is the amplitude of the graph what is the amplitude of the graphs 
both graphs. You can see that both graphs, when you are looking at them, they are moving from the maximum of 1 up to the minimum of negative 1. So remember I said amplitude is calculated or measured by moving from the origin to the maximum and or from the origin to the minimum. So I'm moving a unit up and I'm moving a unit down. So my amplitude of that graph is going to be 1 for both of them. Amplitude is equal to 1 for both graphs. What will be the period? You can see that I have a full period for both graph at 360 degrees. Both graphs are giving me a full cycle or a full shape at 360. What was the domain? The domain meaning my inputs. It's all the values at x that I have covered or, or passed through. For both graphs, I have moved x as an element of 0 up to 360 degrees. That is what I have covered for both graphs. And what is my range? My range, remember I said, is a movement on the y. My output values. My output values are all the real numbers between y as an element of, I have included, 0, negative 1, and 0 up to 1. So is negative 1 up until 1. So I have covered that value or that range moving from negative 1 up to 1 for both graphs. You can see your amplitude is that one. Okay? We also have a coarse graph. Coarse graph is also uh, shifting the very same way as you are shifting the sine graph. As long as you know your parent graph of course, you are shifting now the parent graph, how many units? 30 units to the right because it says cos x minus 30. So I am shifting 30 units to the right. And when I say x plus 60, I'm shifting how many units? I'm shifting 60 units to the left, okay? That is the, the graph. Remember I said observe the shift first and after that you must draw your table which is going to tell you the coordinates of the graph. My coordinates of the graph, again I am going to use the interval of 45. 45, 45 interval throughout, okay? I have my angle theta there. I have my angle theta or x, it's named x, and I have y equal to cos x minus 30. x minus 30 degrees, that is my first one, and my second one will be y equal to cos x plus 60. y equal to cos x plus 60. Now I must find my coordinates of the graph. Remember I said I'm using an interval of 45 from 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 90, 135, uh, 180, 225, 270, 315, and back to 360. Okay, you can see that I'm moving from 
0 up to 360 for both graphs. So my table is going to have the coordinates when my cos is 0. When my cos is 0 and I add os minus 30, what will be the value? The value is going to be 0 0,89. I mean 87. So I round up I round up to 0 0,9 for plotting purposes. When my x is 45, what will be the value? When my x is 45, I am going to have a value of 1. I round up 0 0,965 and I round up to 1. When my cos is, um, when my x is 90, and I subtract 30, 90, subtract 30, it gives me half, a positive one, a positive half. When it is 135, 135, what is my value is negative 0, 0,3 is dropping. Negative 0, 0,3. You can uh, use your calculator with me so that you can be able to see what I am calculating here. When my x is 180, what is my y? Because I want the y value. My y is negative 0, 0,9. I round up. When my x is 2 to 5, what will be my y? When my x is 2 to 5, my y will be negative 1. Remember, I said it's dropping. You can see. Uh, when my x is 270, what is my y? When my x is 270, my y is negative half. Uh -huh, you can see it's going up again from negative 1 to negative half. When my x is uh, 315, what is my y? When my x is 315, my y is 0, 0,3. And when my x is uh, 360, when my x is 360, what is my y? 360 minus 30, it gives you 0, 0,9, where it has started, 0, 0,9. That is y equal to cos x minus 30. Remember I said minus p, it tells you that you are having a shift to which direction? To the right. You are going to have a shift to the right. And when you are having plus, when your p is greater than 0, you have a negative shift to the left okay now let's look at the negative shift what will be the coordinates when my x is 0 now I am adding 60 plus 60 when my x is 0 plus 60 I get half for that one I get half, or you can say 0, 0,5. When my x, 0 plus 60 is half. When my x is 45, I get negative 0, 0,3. It's dropping. When my x is 90, when I have 90 plus 60, I have negative 0, 0,9. Negative 0, 0,9. When it is 135, 
one three five. My x, my y, sorry, is negative one. Has dropped to negative one. When my x is one eighty, my y will be negative half. Now it's going back again. You can see it's moving up again. When my x is 2 to 5, 2 to 5, my y will be 0, 0,3. When my x is 270, 270, when my x is 270, I have 0, 0,9 again. A positive one. When my x is 315, 315, my x is positive one. When my x is 360, what am I having? 360 plus 60, it gives me half. I have a positive half. Now I can be able to plot. Remember I said I'm using an interval of 45. So I'm going to show 45, 135, uh, 225, 315, And 360. So I said, well, on the first one, because remember, I have started with y equal to uh, cos x minus 30. 1, 3, 5, 2, 2, 5. 315. Okay? So when my cos is, uh, my x is 0 at 45, uh, or at 0 first, I have a value of 0, 0,9. It's closer to 1, but not exactly at 1. It's over there. Close to 1. I have a point over there. And when it is 45, it gives me 1. When it is uh, 90, it gives me half. It's dropping. It's dropping. I start at 0, 0,9. 1 half and 135 I said negative 0 comma 3 negative 0 comma 3 is not at half just above half it's over there and 180 is negative 0 comma 9 close to negative 1 and 225 is negative half, going back again, half of the graph. And 270, it's, uh, sorry, at 225 is negative 1, negative 1 before it go back. It approaches the maximum, the minimum, sorry the minimum and at 270 it's negative half going back at 315 it's 0 comma 3 positive 1 it's over there and at 360 it's back to where it has started 0 comma 9 over there so my graph is going like this, curving, 
and moving this way. That is my y equal to cos what? x minus 30 degrees. That's what I get. Now when I have, it's a curve, remember? It's curving there. Okay, now when I had uh, a shift, 15, uh, 30 units, in fact 60 units to the left, when I have 30 units, 60 units to the left plus 60, my graph, let's see the shift, I'll use a different color, I'll use black now, so that you can be able to see the, the shift from uh, negative 30 and positive 60. I had half at 0 and at negative, uh, at 45 I had negative 0, 0,3 over there. At 90 I had um, negative 0, 0,9 close to negative 1 but not reaching 1. At 135, I'm at negative 1. At 180, I am at negative half over there. My half is over there. At 225, I have Uh, 225 is 0, 0,3, a positive 1. 0, 0,3. What did I do? Okay, look at this one. Um, I have the value, the value, the value, the value. And 180, I said it's negative half. And um, 0, 0,3. A positive one, zero comma three for two two five over there, and two seventy. I have zero comma nine, close to one, but not yet there. And three one five is one, just at one, positive one. positive 1, and at 360, I have a half over there. So my graph is going like this, curving, going back, and going back. It's going this way. That's how my graph looks like. You can see there's a shift from the x minus 30, which has shifted from the parent graph to the, uh, to the right. And when I say uh, plus 60, it's shifting to the left now. You can see there's a shift to the left. Okay? That's what is happening. All right. Now, moving on to the 10 graph. The 10 graph is also shifting the same way, but now with the 10 graph, remember the, the parent graph of 10 is having a complete shape at 180. That is not changing. It's still giving you a complete figure or a, a, a complete shape at 180, but now we are just shifting to whether we are moving to the left or to the right. Like in this case, that graph is shifting to the left. It says y equal to 10x plus 45. It's shifting 45 units to the left. And the second one, it says y equal to 10x minus 60, shifting 60 units to the right. So I, I will use an interval of 45 and 
Remember I said to you, we must be able to do what? To have the uh, table first before we plot the graph. Before we plot the graph, let's have our table which will tell us the coordinates of the graph. I'm using y equal to um, 45, 45 interval. X or theta is the same. So I will start from 0, 45, uh, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, and 360. Okay? All right, those are my input values that I'm going to use. For which graph? For the graph of y equal to 10, x plus 45, and y equal to 10, x minus 60. All right. I am going to plot that graph y equal to 10x plus 45, and y equal to 10x minus 60. So when plotting at 0, when my x is 0, 10, 0, plus 45 gives you 1. I have a value of 1. When it is 45, what is your y? When it is 45, the y is undefined, undefined. You can see your graph is giving you error. It tells you that we are having an asymptote there. Don't get confused. When you see error, it tells you that is your asymptote of the graph. When your 10x is shifted, how many units? 45 units to the left. You have an undefined at 45. That is your asymptote. When it is 90, when your 10 is 90 plus 45, what is the value? It's negative 1. When it is 135, what is your y? 135, it gives you 0. And when it is 180, what is your y? It's 1. When it is 225, what is your y? 2 to 5, it's also giving you undefined. That is your other asymptote. It gives you error. When it is um, 270, when it is 270 plus 45, it gives you negative 1. When it is 315, 315 plus 45 is 0. When it is uh, 360, when your graph, I mean your x is 360, what will be the y? When x is 360, y will be equal to 1. That is the values for what? For y equal to 10x plus 45. And now when I'm shifting, on, because I will plot on the same 
set of axis. When I am shifting 60 units to the right, now it's the same 10 graph, but now I'm shifting 60 units to the right. Minus 60. I'm subtracting 60. From 0, because I start there, to, s to check the values, it gives me negative root 3. For plotting purposes, it's negative 1,7. When I have 45, 10, 45, it gives me negative 0, 0,3. When I have 90, it gives me root 3 over 3, which is 0, 0,6, positive 1, 0, 0,6. When I have 3, I mean 135, 135, it gives me 3,7, 3,7. When I have 180, 180, it gives me negative root 3, that is negative 1,7 again. When I'm at 2 to 5, 225, it gives me negative 0, 0,3. When I'm at um, 270, what is my y? At it's root 3 over 3, which I simplify to 0, 0,6, positive 1, 0, 0,6, 315. 3.15 gives you 3,7 and 3.60 3.60 give you root 3 which is negative 1,7 alright now I have my values I have identified I have calculated my values that I'm going to plot. Now it's time for me to do what? To plot the graph. I must plot the 10 graph on the 45-45 interval. And remember, I have my first y equal to 10 x plus 45 at 0. Here is 0, my origin. So what will be the value? When my x is 0, what will be the y? When my x is 0, y will be 1. It's going to be there. When my x is 45, what will be the y? When my x is 45, the y will be undefined. I will have my asymptote over there. I'm showing my asymptote with a broken line vertically. Down. And when it is 90, what is my y value? My y value at 90 is negative 1. It's over there. The point is over there. When it is 135, what is my y? It's 0. The point is over there. And when it is uh, 180, what is my y? At 180, my y is positive one, I have a point over there. And when it is 2 to 5, what is my y? At 2 to 5, my y is um, undefined again at 2 to 5. That, there goes my second asymptote. And that tells me one thing, that I will have a full shape of the graph between my first asymptote and the second asymptote. I will have a full shape of the, of the graph, a full cycle. 
Okay, at 270, what is your Y? Your Y is going to be uh, at 270, it's negative 1. It's over there. At uh, what is your Y? At 315. At 315, it's 0. It's starting another cycle now. And at 360, what is your Y? It's 1. Positive 1. I have a positive 1 over there. Meaning my graph is going this way. It's going this way. It's moving this way. And it's also moving that way. That is how my graph is moving. It's moving that way. Can you see it's getting closer to the asymptote, but not touching the asymptote. It's getting closer to this, to this line, but it's not touching. Can you see? It's getting closer all the way. It's getting closer, and which means when you continue with the graph, you'll find another asymptote. But I said we are moving between 0 and 360, which means our first graph is going to be, uh, is going to look like this. This is our first graph of y equal to 10x plus 45. Okay? Now, let's look at the shift of x minus 60. When I have x minus 60, what is the value at 0? What is my y value at 0? When my x is 0, my y, I said, is going to be negative 1, 7. Negative. It's shifting. Negative 1, 7. Here is negative 1. Can you see? And 1, 7 is just above a half. Between what? Between negative 1 and negative 2. And when I am having, uh, okay, let me use a red color so that you can be able to see. I'm using a red color for the other graph. So I'm having negative 1, comma, 7. That is my first point at 0. When my x is 45, what is your y? Is going to be at negative 0, 0,3. Negative 0, 0,3 is over there. Over there. Below 90. I mean, it, it, it is just above uh, 0, 0,5. It's 0, 0,3. And at 135, I have 3... Comma, uh, I said at 90, it's, okay, I made a mistake. At uh, 90, we said it's 0, 0,6. It's 0, 0,6, which means it's just above a half, above 0, 0,5. So when I'm at 135, the value is 3,7. 3. 7. Three comma seven there is three meaning three comma seven is above the half is over there that is the point that i'll be having for three comma seven three comma seven is over there when my x is 270 what is my y is negative zero comma three I have negative 0, 0,3 over there at 270. And when it is um, 315, I have um, I said 225. Oh, okay. I made a mistake. Sorry. I said 180. 135, 135 is uh, 3, 
Oh. This way I missed. 135 is the one that is 3,7. 135 is the one that is over there. Over there. 135. And the 180 is the one that is negative 1,7. 180 is negative 1,7. Negative 1, comma 7 over there. Negative 1, comma 7, 180. And uh, 225 is the one that is negative 0, comma 3. 225 is over there. And what else? 270, 0, 0,6, positive 1. 0, 0,6, uh, 0, 0,6 is for 270. And 3,7 is 315, sorry, 315. 315 is 3,7 back there. There is 3,15 over there. So 360, the last one, uh, I have negative 1,7. Negative 1,7. Negative 1, 7 over there. So my graph is moving this way. It's going closer closer to the, the that one that I have started with, but not uh, touching it and I'm having a movement again this way I'm having a movement again that way so you can see that I have a shift there is a shift this way my shift is going to the left because of that uh, 45 and going to the right because of that 60. Meaning, from where I was, I move to the, I move to the right, and from where I was, I move to the left. So that's how the P is affecting the, the graph, the shift of the graph. So the graph is moving that way. Okay? Now, looking at the period of both graphs, at number 2 and at number 3, if you look at number 2, number 2, I was having the cost graph. So the period at number 2, at number 2 period is still 360. It's 360. And Period at number three is what? Is still 180. Remember I said the period is not changing. At number two is still 360. And at number three, the graph that I was plotting is 180. And what will be the amplitude? For the 10 graph, we don't have the amplitude because the graph is moving from the negative infinity till the positive infinity. So for number two, number two, I have one as my amplitude. Amplitude is one for the first graph at number two is equal to one. 
But for number three, my amplitude is not there. It moves positive infinity till negative infinity. It's touching all the real numbers up and down. So there is no amplitude. We can't say there is an amplitude there. Because the graph is moving, touching all the positive or real numbers. Or we can say real numbers, all the real numbers are giving us the amplitude. Positive infinity till negative infinity. When I'm looking at the domain, or let me start with the range, the range of number two, range at number two, number two is moving, uh, covering y as an element of negative one till one. That is my cos graph. It moves from negative one till one. And for the for number three, that is the, the 10 graph, the range there is all the real numbers, all real numbers. Y is an element of all real numbers. Y is an element of all real numbers. That is your number three on your range. Then the domain, domain for number two, the cost graph for number two, the domain is x as an element of zero until 360. And for number three, the 10 graph is x as an element of, uh, I have covered zero till 360 again. Zero till 360 for my 10 as well. Because I have uh, moved on all my x values from zero up until 360. All right, now we are going to look at the developing of the sine and cosine curves. When we are developing the sine and the cosine curves, you must remember your ratios. Sine ratio is sine theta equal to y over r. Your sine theta is y over r and your cos theta is x over r as well as your 10 theta equal to y over x, where r is the length of the vector, and x and y are its components. So we are looking at that. You remember, you have done that, where you were having your, your ratio, sine, cos, and 10 on a right angle triangle, knowing that your r is the one that gives you your hypotenuse, the longest side, and your x and y are the vertical and the horizontal sides of your, uh, your right angle. Now, if you have your r equal to 1, then it means your sine theta will give you the y component. If you are having your r as 1 and your sine theta is going to be equal to the y component. Why am I saying so? Remember, I said uh, sine, sine is y over r. And now I say my r is equal to 1. So it means I will have sine equal to y over 1. And 1 is not changing the identity. Therefore, it gives me y as the answer for sine. That's why I say for sine, I will have the y component, this one. I will have this one, my y component, which is made up of the sine. And when I'm talking about cos theta, I say cos theta is equal to x because cos theta is equal to 
x over 1 when I take my r as 1 and because 1 is not changing the identity so cos is giving me the x component of my graph. It gives me the x component and this one sign give me the y component of my graph. All right. If theta ranges from 0 to 360 in 45 intervals and a vector of a length of 1 rotates through each of the, 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 the 45 intervals, then it produces a circle. Here I have my, uh, my Cartesian plane moving with 45, 45, 45 with my... Uh, intervals all round. Can you see that I end up having a, a, a circle produced over there? That's what it means when I'm having that 45 interval throughout. It's 0, 45, 90, uh, 135 moving with the interval of uh, 45 all round. 0 to 45. 0 to 45, 0 to 45, it gives you an interval, meaning a gap of 45. Then you end up having a what? A cycle over there. S uh, so it's the same with the, with the course. When you are generating the course graph, your y is equal to cos theta. It means you are having now an x component, your x component moving this way. You are having an X component for what? For the course graph. Okay? Now let us look at activity two. Activity two, trying to generate or plot the curves of uh, both Y component and the X component. Meaning I must use the, remember I said your Y component is sine and your X component is Course, meaning when I am having that those values, I must complete the table. And after completing the table, I must be able to plot the graph. It means here at zero, uh, when I say sine zero on my y component, sine zero, I get the zero that you see there. When I say cos 0, cos 0, I get the one that you see over there. So what will be cos 45? It will be give you 0, 0,71. And sine uh, 45 will give you 0, 0,71 as well. What will be the y uh, the y component at 90. When you are having 90, 90, what will be your y component? Sine 90 will be equal to 1. And cos 90, cos 90 is equal to 0. When you are having sine uh, 135, you are generating the curve now. Sine 135 gives you 0, 0,71 again. 0, 0,71 and what will be cause? 135 cos 135 will also will give you negative 0, 0,71 when I have um, 180 Sine 180, it gives me 0. When I have cos 180, cos 
cos 180 gives me negative 1. Sine 225. Sine 225 gives me negative 0, 0,71. Negative 0, 0,71 and cos 225. Cos 225 gives me negative 0, 0,71 as well. 270 sine 270 sine 270. gives you negative 1 and cos 270 cos 270 it's 0 and sine 315 sine sine 315 315 Gives you negative 0, 0,1, uh, 0,71. And what will be cos? Cos 315. It's 0, 0,71. It's 0, 0,71. That is cos 315. What is 360? 360. Cos 360. Give us 1. And sine 360. Sine 360. Give us 0. Meaning, I will use those 45, 45, intervals to plot the graphs because I have the values I must copy and complete I have completed as you can see the values are completed over there now we need to plot the graph we must plot the graph when plotting the graph using the uh, 45 interval from one from zero it's going with a positive 1, negative 1, your origin over there, 0, 45, 90, 135, uh, 180, 225, 270, 315, and 360 on your x. And I said on my y, I'm having a unit of 1 up and a unit of 1 down. So when I'm plotting the first one, you can see that it gives you a, an original sine graph. It's moving from here, going over there, giving you 1 at 90, going back and 0 over there, going down, down, up again, and over there, meaning your curve is moving this way. That is your y equal to sine x or y equal to sine theta. And your y equal to cos theta will start at 1, positive 1. Remember, sine started at 0. So cos start at 1 and uh, cutting your x at 90 going down at 135 
and curving at 180 at negative 1 back again at 225 and cutting at 270 and 315 over there and ending there meaning uh, you will see your graph of or your curve of cos and x going this way this is your uh, your x your x component cos graph y equal to cos theta this is this is what we refer to as the x component and this one is what we refer to as the y component your sign okay that's how you plot it okay now we need to find the equation of a trig equation solving a trig equation when you are solving a trig equation for theta as an element of 0 up until 360 you are solving trig equations that requires you to find the value that will satisfy the angle of the equation when you want to know whether that uh, a solution is positive or negative is going to be determined by the equation that you are solving the equation that you are solving will tell you whether your solution will come on which uh, quadrant on the first second third or fourth where the the uh, trick equation is satisfied there are many ways of values that satisfy a trick equation within a domain of zero from uh, 0 to 360 but in grade 11 we are looking at 0 up to 360 we only find the values of the angles within a domain of 0 to 360 what is happening or how do we find them like in activity 3 if you look at it it may look difficult but it's actually it's not because you need to understand how to find it you have sine theta plus 2 equal to 3 that is the first question and the second one is square root 3 10 theta plus 1 equal to 0 and the third one is 4 sec theta plus 8 equal to 0 and the fourth one is sine theta equal to negative 0 comma 7 and the last one is 18 cos theta minus 9 root 3 equal to 0 and when calculating this one remember I said you are looking as to where will the solution come out and how are you working out like the first one when you want to find the solution you can see that I have sine theta plus 2 equal to 3 I'm solving the equation here when solving the equation you follow the the steps of solving you can see that I have sine theta going with a positive 3 w that positive 3 must be transposed I transpose the 3 to that side and it gives me a negative 3 meaning I will have my first solution as sine theta equal to 3 minus 2 and that is the inverse additive inverse of positive 2 positive 2 additive inverse is negative 2 so I have removed the, neg the positive to this side to the other side of the equal sign and it changes the sign and it becomes a negative so when I subtract that I will have sine theta equal to 1 and that is not the answer that is not the solution they say write your answers rounded off to two decimal places meaning I must use my calculator and find uh, my angle theta I'm looking for the value 
of angle theta there, I'm finding the solution. And when I'm finding the solution, there is a sign that is blocking me there. That sign must be moved. And uh, when I'm moving the sign from there to this side of the equal sign, it will give me a shift and a sign inverse. So I will have uh, theta left alone there equal to sign inverse of 1, what was already there. And my angle theta will be equal to 90 degrees. It gives me my angle theta equal to 90 degrees. And that is the only solution that I'm having because uh, on my Cartesian plane, I have 90 directly on the line. It's not falling in between the the, the 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 Cartesian plane. On my Cartesian plane, 90 is over there, which means I have a solution for sine theta plus 2 over there, right there, nowhere else. That is the only solution that I'm having for the first one. The second one, I have root 3 plus root 310 theta plus 1 equal to 0. Again, additive inverse of positive 1 is negative 1, transposed to the next side. So I will have root 3, 10 theta, left, equal to, and that 1, when it comes this side, it becomes negative 1. And uh, what is blocking me from having the answer? I still have root 3 and 10. So I will start by dividing both sides by root 3, divide by root 3. Divide both sides by root 3. When you divide by root 3, you have now, you are left with 10 theta equal to negative 1 over root 3. Negative 1 over root 3. And I am solving for theta. I want the solution that will satisfy the value of this. Meaning I must find my reference angle. I must find my reference angle. My reference angle will be found by shifting 10 to this side. So I will have reference angle as 10 inverse of negative 1 over root 3, which gives me uh, 30. Shift 10, negative 1 over square root 3 gives you your reference angle. And you can see that it says is equal to negative 30. That negative 30 is telling you where are you going to have the solution for theta, where 10 is negative, where 10 is negative. Meaning, in actual words, your reference angle is just 30. Ignore the, the, 30, the, the negative. The negative is telling you where is your solution. Your solution is where the 10 is going to be negative. Remember, you from your Cartesian plane, on the first quadrant, you are using your cast. You have all of them positive on the first quadrant. All of them are positive. And on the second quadrant is sine, and it's reciprocal. On the third quadrant is 10, that is positive. And on the fourth quadrant is cos, that is positive, meaning your solution lies between uh, uh, quadrant on quadrant 2 and on quadrant 3. So in order for you to find your answer, your solution, you are going to say, uh, you are going to take your reference angle and subtract from 180. Remember, here you have 180 going this way. You subtract. And here you have 360. Going this way, you have to 
subtract. So you are going to subtract your, three, your, your, your reference angle from 180 and from 360. So your solution is going to be the, the first one as um, 180 minus 30. It does not mean that it's 180 minus 30, that looking at that 30. It tells you that uh, that's where your 10 is going to be negative. It's going to be negative on the second quadrant, meaning I must subtract my reference angle, which is 30. I'll say 180 minus 30, and it gives me 150 degrees. That is my first solution for my angle theta on the second quadrant. This is on the second quadrant. Quadrant. And the solution on the fourth quadrant is uh, 360 minus the reference angle. I will say 360 minus 30 degrees. And it will give me 330. That is the solution on the fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant. Which satisfies the the, the the question. So I have those solutions. For what? For that question where I have 10 theta equal to negative 1 over root 3. Where it's negative. It's negative on the second quadrant and on the fourth quadrant. Going to number 3. Number 3 you have 4 sec theta plus 8 equal to 0. Additive inverse first must be transposed and you have negative 8. So you are left with 4 sec theta equal to negative 8. And you are looking for the solution. And divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4. You are left with sec theta equal to uh, equal to negative 2. Equal to negative 2. And as you know that uh, sec is the reciprocal of cos, meaning for me to find the answer on my calculator, I must uh, find what will be cos. If sec is negative 2 over 1, it means cos We were still here on question three, where we have transposed that, and we've got sec theta equal to negative two. Remember that? And now, for us to find the solution, it means we must find uh, the reference angle. And our reference angle, we don't ha on our calculator, we don't have sec but we have cos, and for us to have the value of cos, we, it means we must find what will be cos. That tells us that cos theta is going to be a negative 1 over 2, because it's the inverse. Remember, this one is negative 2 over 1, and is the reciprocal of cos. So if it is the reciprocal of cos, it tells us that cos will be negative 1 over 2. You just swap them around like that. So when I want my reference angle so that I can be able to see where cos is negative, I will press on my calculator shift cos negative 1 over 2. And I get my answer as 120. It means when I have that as negative, it, it will give me uh, 120. But I am no, I'm looking for my reference angle. So my reference angle is going to be shift 
cos um, one over two. It means I will have my reference angle as 60. Remember I said negative half is telling you where am I going to have cos or sec as negative. And again, on my Cartesian plane, I know that cos is negative where? On quadrant three and on quadrant two, on the second and the third quadrant. That's where I am ho going to have my solution. So it means my solution, now that I've got my reference angle as that one, this is my reference angle. So I will subtract my reference angle from 180 to get the solution and add my reference angle to 180 to get the solution. So I will have my solution as theta equal to 180 minus 60 and that gives you um, 120. It gives you 120 degrees. That is your first solution. On where? On the second quadrant. On the second quadrant. And on the third quadrant, it's on this one. You are going to say 180 plus your reference angle plus 60 which give you 240. It gives you 240 degrees. That is on the third quadrant. That's where the next solution is. All right, moving on to question four. Question four says sine theta equal to negative 0, 0,7. I want to know the solution of theta where I will have a negative a uh, uh, sign of 0, 0,7. So what I'll do, I must find the reference angle first. It means I will say theta is equal to sine inverse of a uh, negative 0, comma, se, ne negative 0, 0,7. And my answer will be negative 44,4. And remember I said to you, that negative 44,4 is telling you where are you finding the solution, where sine is negative, meaning your reference angle is equal to 44,4. So I will take my reference angle and go and check where sine will be negative. I know sine is negative on quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So that's where I will have my solution. My solution will be on the third quadrant, 180, theta equal to 180, plus my reference angle. Because for me to have the value that will fall or satisfy to be on the third quadrant, it must be above 180. That's why I say one. 180 plus my reference angle. So I will say 180 plus 44,4. And it gives me uh, 1, I mean 225, comma 4. And remember the question, right, it says write your answer to two decimal places. I just add 0. That is my first solution on the third quadrant. On the fourth quadrant, I will say 360 degrees minus 44,4. And I will have my answer as 315. I have my solution as 315. comma 6 and I add 0. That is my second solution. So I have these two solutions for question number 4. 
Moving on to question number five. Question number five, it says 18 cos theta minus 9 root 3 equal to 0. So for me to find the solution, I must transpose this one first. So I will be left with 18 cos theta equal to positive 9 square root 3. And I'm looking for uh, theta, not 18 cos theta. Divide by 18 first, both sides, and 18 is gone. And find your reference angle of cos inverse of 9 root 3 over 18. And you go to your calculator, shift, cos, 9, it's positive, remember? Root 3 over 18. And your reference angle is equal to 30. So... It means my reference angle here, reference angle is equal to 30. And I'm looking at as to where am I going to get cos positive. And I will be adding or subtracting the reference angle. Fortunately for us, the reference angle is also the solution, our first solution because 30 is positive on the first quadrant over there. Cos is positive and is also positive over there on the fourth quadrant, meaning I will have two solutions. This is my first solution on the first quadrant, on the first quad, and I will also have my second solution on the fourth, fourth quadrant where I will say 360 minus my reference angle of 30 and it gives me 330 degrees and that is how we get our answer that is how we solve the trig equations and remember this is on the on the fourth quadrant on the fourth Remember that in order for you to understand the work, you must keep on practicing up until you understand the work. So with that being said, we have come to the end of our lesson for today.